I know. <laughs> Welcome to the Two Posh Podcast. I am Gabrielle. I am a former New York Mafia princess, originally from Austria. I am the mother of three and the owner of Two Posh Boutique. And here with my beautiful co host, Marcella, my daughter. Hello, I'm Marcella. I'm a dancer, choreographer, model, and designer for Two Posh. And I say whatever the f I want. Hi, my name is Cruz. I am a stylist. I also own the Society salon in the design district and I am a short little Mexican with a big personality. I am Polly. <laughs> I am a certified sexual health consultant and educator, former professional dominatrix, currently working at the largest adult novelty store in the Texas Panhandle. What will they say next? Welcome to the Two Posh Podcast. <laughs> Jackie Prieto. Am I saying this right? You yeah. are. <laughs> is it you, Italian? It is. It's actually, uh, my father is Mexican Italian. And then my mm. mother is Mexican German Italian Spaniard. Oh, wow. I'm a little American mutt. I love it. It's all over the place. Well, yeah. Jackie, welcome to the Two Posh podcast. We're honored to have you. Thank you for having me. Um, I did a little bit of research. I saw that you have two beautiful sons. How old are they? 13 and 10. They're oh. precious little angels. I really genuinely mean that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a miracle. I mean, they're teenagers. They're teenagers and they're so good. Oh my God. That is awesome. And good they have, for you. we have such a great relationship. Yes. Like, you know, they'll be like, um, mom. Oh my God, she was just staring at me. Aww. And so I just walked over and I talked to her. And I'm like, he's like, she's so hot. <laughs> I love it though. You know? That's so cute. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So tell us, you're the owner of Lux Contour Dallas. Tell us a little bit what that is and so, all about it. Um, actually, it was birthed, what I would say, like through pain right because i was in a really bad wreck in july of 2020 and i what couldn't happened? um i was actually on my way to work out uh, at f45 and then i was hitting <laughs> yoga right after and it was like in the middle of the day at four o'clock and some young girl just t-boned me out of nowhere and i still to this day don't have a memory of it at all like i don't i just remember leaving my house and thinking Oh, I'm going to be early. It's not me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, I'll just go anyway. Um, anyway, T-boned. Um, don't really have any memories for like the next two days. And that's when my memories like start picking up. I would say, I wouldn't say they're full memories, but they start picking up. So, I mean, how injured were you? So the officer that found me, actually, I called him once I was, you know, out of the hospital and everything. And I was just want to thank him, you know, for pulling me out and stuff. Uh, he started crying <gasps> immediately when he heard my voice. He was like, I have been an officer for over 30 years and I have seen my share of victims that do not make it. And he was like, I'm sorry, just give me a moment to compose myself. He was like, when I... Pulled up. I was across the street, so it took me like 10 minutes to get over there to you. you. Your face, you were fixated, no pulse, nothing. Your body was limp. And I was like, okay, she's, you know, deceased. I'm just going to go check on the people that hit her. I have goosebumps. Yeah. I had me too. Oh. And he was back there checking on her, his young girl. And so talking to her, you know, whatever. He said, ma'am, all of a sudden, your car sparked into flames right where you were <gasps> sitting. And he said, all I could think was... I've got to go pull her out because her parents can't, you know, identify a charred body because it's against their protocol. They're not supposed to touch you. You know, they have to wait for the ambulance to get there. I have goosebumps literally on my toes. I know. I oh, get my God. That's so crazy. About it. <sighs> wow. That is, that is not long ago. I mean, no. that is so. Yeah. He said some man. This is what's crazy. Some man just like appeared to help him. Pull me out, and that man held me the entire time until the ambulance got there. And like thirty-four cop cars showed up, girl, crazy. But it was during that time, like where, you know, we were having all that racial. You know, uh -huh. they were just worried about everybody. I guess I'm not really sure. 
Because your car is on fire. On fire. Yeah. In an intersection. And it's like, it dented the, you know, light post where it was. So How fast was she going? She, I don't even know. I don't even know if they know. But um, I was about to get onto the highway. It was the last little intersection, right? And the highway actually started right after that. So I had already sped up. Like Wait, I was going. Do you remember the intersection? Yes. It's um, actually a mile from my house. It's not <gasps> very far. I hear this. So wear your seatbelt near uh, your home. Uh, yes. <laughs> you had your seatbelt on. I don't remember. Oh, you don't know. Oh. What was the intersection? Um, it was Clark and. It's now an intersection. The light wasn't completely full yet or like finished. So I'm not even sure what the name of it is, but it's right after um, Camp Wisdom. Camp Wisdom. Mm -hmm. So So then, and she, so did somebody run a red light or it's just a freak accident? So the the lights weren't fully on yet, but she was supposed to still stop because it, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. They had like a yield sign because it was construction. So the, the sides were supposed to stop. And this was the main road that was allowed to just go. I see. So. So 45 cop cars. 34. Oh, 34. Yeah. <laughs> but 45 sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> also, we'll go with that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So then what happened? So the gentleman that held me the whole, he held me the whole time. And the guy said that he, the officer that found me, he was like, I just um, went back and forth to check on you. And he was like, I really never expected to hear from you he was like I just wanted to at least see you get off into the ambulance you know and um from there they took me to the one hospital they couldn't see me because my brain injuries were so bad so you had had brain injuries um fractured skull bleeding on the brain um rupture like my pituitary gland had been ruptured and like shooken really bad shaken rather um What else? There was like swelling on my brain. I had fractured ribs towards into my heart on both sides of my chest on this side. Oh my Um, gosh. I had, oh my God, fractured fingers, fractured toe, fractured like a bunch of fractured things (laughs) on my body. But the miracle is they weren't all broken. They were just all fractured, which is amazing, you know, after something like that. And my head injuries, like, you know, severe Um, chips. My tooth was like completely chipped, all kinds of crazy stuff. But what was wild is you couldn't have anybody with you during COVID. COVID. And you're in July. So it's like fresh. Fresh. You know, but I'd already been traveling. I was like, oh, it's there's no COVID, you know. But anyway, um. One cool thing I have to mention is that I thought I have this memory, even though I don't have any memories of that for like three days. I had this like peaceful memory of my dad, like holding my hand down the hallway at the hospital, even though I don't remember it. I know that's crazy, but you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, so I was like, dad, you know, I just remember you being there for me. But he was like, Jackie. It's COVID. None of us could be in there. I was like, <gasps> Jesus. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. So it was, it was amazing. Um, and then the, so the healing from an injury to your brain like that, what was that like? Extensive. Extensive. I had a, I actually got out of the hospital three days later, um, which was not right. I ended up going right back into the hospital three days, like four days later or something um, because of my pituitary gland. They didn't realize like how bad it had been shaken. And I actually started going into a coma state. So I could, my body was in so much pain. You don't realize that salt is super important for your body. Um, So I didn't have the proper level. And so my body started shutting down and it was like an extreme pain. I couldn't even hold down water. I was just unable to do anything um actually one of my cousins came over and this is crazy too she was like singing to me you know some like hymns and gospel songs and stuff just like trying to like set peace in the mood you know Mm -hmm. um and y'all I was in so much pain 
so much that I literally just felt my body start giving up. Like it was, but it felt peaceful because I guess, cause you know, the surrounding the music, like it just was like a peace filled moment. And I saw this, <laughs> sounds crazy. I saw this bright light, like my eyes were shut. I couldn't even open them. Y'all could not open my eyes for three days. It was just everything hurt. Seeing the light hurt, anything hurt. And this bright light and oh my God, I can't even explain the level of peace that I felt like unlike anything you've ever felt in your entire entire life even like your best moment you know the most amazing feeling so there's just like so many crazy stories within the story yeah um when I went back to the hospital you know I couldn't have anyone there and every day the doctors would come in and they'd bring another doctor in and you'd see their worry and like their fear because my levels were just off every my arms were like black and blue because they were just like checking hourly, hourly because mm-hmm. it was that serious. You know, um, I was either going to become a vegetable. That was my option. As That's what they were worried about because they were like, OK, she's at vegetable state, which you don't want to hear that. <laughs> You're like, just figure it out. <laughs> so yeah. You could hear them saying those. Things? Uh-huh. Oh. No, they they told me. <laughs> what, were you in ICU? They didn't take me to ICU. Um, they just are actually Girl, I don't know. <laughs> I could have been. <laughs> I don't know, but I was in, I was on level four. That's what I do know. <laughs> and um, so they just had me in there and doctor after doctor would come in, like checking my levels, et cetera. And one night I'd been there like four nights or five nights already and no human interaction, guys, we need each other. And like, yes, like you need humanity and you need like, care and love Especially and concern when you're in the hospital my God. you know when you're Horrible. when your life's like at the end on the line yeah. yeah and I um I just felt like I had nothing left to fight with like I was drained emotionally physically alone. alone you know like I knew that I was like everything was dependent on my willpower at that point because everything was just not looking good <laughs> and so I asked this nurse I was like ma'am I know that like, this is probably not okay right now, but, um, especially with COVID, but is there any way that you could just hold my hand? (gasps) (laughs) I could cry again because I just needed contact. I just needed to know that there's life, like something, you know, to hold on to. I couldn't see my kids. They'd already (gasps) been gone for summer with their dad. So I couldn't actually see them or touch them. Nothing, you know? So it's just a very, um, very hard thing to deal with, like emotionally I and would, mentally, mm-hmm. as well as you're already physically like <clears throat> dead, you know? I mean, I, this is like two years and a couple of months. Like, are you in pain still? No, like, but I will say that this nail came <laughs> off and it just barely grew back. <laughs> Three months ago, <laughs> okay, fully. Wow. So that, like, to me, told me, you know, you're allowed to have patience with yourself, like, with the healing process and everything, because brain injuries are serious. Mm-hmm. I had to have someone that was, like, teaching me, okay, numbers again, animals again. Wow, that's mm-hmm. crazy. It was like a stroke, like, really severe. But then they say, you know, because... um you know, if you get a concussion or something like you can go through depression or be like sad. Did you go through any of that at all? I would say a hundred percent frustration because you go through like I was so active. Like imagine I'm going to work out two times in a row, you know, mm-hmm. like on the go all the time. And I literally couldn't see or, or walk without anybody helping oh. me. Wow. It was so bad. I um. That was the hardest thing was knowing that I had to depend on somebody like I felt disabled in every way Yeah, because I couldn't think properly. I couldn't process my words to speak to you properly. Like I thought that I was telling you something, but I wasn't telling you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, yeah. And then I also I really couldn't see unless it was right here and I'd still have to close one eye to try to focus on it. Wow. Like that's how 
messed up my brain. But what it was for the vision was that my muscles were so tight, they couldn't release. And so it blurred my vision out. How frightening mm -hmm. is that? My gosh. So I really couldn't see for like four to five months. Wow. What? It was, that part was awful. And that was the hardest thing because mentally going from fully capable to disabled overnight. In an instant. It's, it's literally one of the most terrible things. I'm not going to say worse because there are a lot of bad things. But it was very, very hard to come through mentally. Wow. that And then today, do you have, like, with your vision and all that stuff? I would that? say, so today, like, even now, if I'm really tired and I'm driving late or something or I've been working a lot, my vision starts just like blurring a little bit, but it's not gone. It's like it just starts getting blurry, almost like letting my body know, hey, you need to rest, mm -hmm. like just rest. And then as far as like the mind and the memory, I would say it's almost, you know, 85 percent better. Just yeah. because there's still like little things. I don't remember everything. I have to, I become an excellent like planner. <laughs> I plan down to the T, you know. Um, but other than that, it's gotten a lot, lot better. Yeah. Do you have headaches? No, wow. thank God. That's amazing. That I is know. Amazing. That was one of my signs that something was off, though, when I had to go back into the hospital because the headaches were so excruciating. Uh, mm -hmm. At the time. At the time. And your poor parents. I know. Yeah, it was rough because, I mean, you know, they kind of basically had to quit doing what they were doing to take care of me, you know? And then my boys, it happened during the summer and we had a, a pool and. They didn't even want to go outside. They never left my side. <gasps> Your kid. Never. Mm -mm. Yeah. They're wow. so precious. Yeah, because that was probably hard for them, too. It was very hard. Yeah. My my sons wouldn't even talk about it for a year. Whenever we would say the wreck, they'd be like, please don't talk about it. And I think, because um, I follow you on Instagram, obviously, I feel like I've seen you post the car, and that's yeah. very... Where you, you saw, like, it was like... Yeah. Yeah. Were what you kind of shocked? car was that? It was a Jeep Commander, which is meant for war. <laughs> I mean, <gasps> the frame is really heavy. They don't even make them anymore. But that, like, whole design was meant for a war car. So the frame was really, really, like, sturdy and capable of taking hits, you know? Um, but it was so bad that it was, like, crunched in. Were you shocked when you saw the car? What were Absolutely. those emotions like? Absolutely. I was just like, wow, I can't believe God brought me through that. Because it's when, a miracle. Yeah. And when she hit you, she hit your side or you? She actually hit the passenger side and I flew up. My head broke the windshield and then I flew back down into the passenger seat and my legs were like over to the driver's seat and I was slumped in. So that's, that's how the officer described like it. Maybe you didn't put your seatbelt on? Probably not. I mean, that... Well, especially when you're so close to the house. I, I feel like yeah. that's your... Com like, a lot of people are like, okay, I am exactly. really close. Like, it I mean, how often do we, like, take it off? Because we're like, okay, we're about to be there and we got to hurry. Like, yeah. we're in a rush, you right, know? Right, right, right. And not far, you're thinking, like... I can still stick it on before the highway. <laughs> right. But I don't for sure know, but that's probably it. I, I don't mean, know. They said they had to, like, cut me out of all kinds of stuff. Um, so you don't know for sure, but it is a possibility. I think so. Oh my mm. goodness. So mm. then from that, you said that you're, uh, yes. So I wanted to still go celebrate my birthday <laughs> in Tulum with all my friends. Mm. And so I was like, Oh, my mom's Italian and. Mexican I'm just eating all these things laying in bed because I can't move I can't walk what am I gonna do so I found cavitation lipo and I was like oh my god what is that I was like I never have to work out and I can eat whatever I want <laughs> again like what? I don't even know what that is it's um an ultrasonic blast that goes in and it bursts the fat cells and liquefies them yeah so then you just process it out of your lymphatic system and you're good. You're so good. It's crazy. So you see like you have one session, right? And then 
you see your maximum results in like two weeks. Most of my clients, I would say, like text me overnight and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I have abs again. <laughs> you know? Wow. Yeah, but it's just science. It's amazing. So you know? You did that and then. So I did it. Okay. And I was like, I have to find out everything about this. Like, can I actually do this? Can I? I'm passionate about this. I love it. And um, yeah. what is different to regular? Lipo There's so many different liposuction. Or so like now, cool sculpting. Cool even. Sculpt I even have a cool sculpting machine. I bought one at the beginning whenever I was like, okay, I'm going to dive into this arena. So I went to school for it, et cetera. And come to find out, You'll even hear there's lawsuits with cool sculpting. Um, yes. And that 100% makes full sense because if you think about it just logically, something that's frozen, right, an ice cube, it's so hard. Do you Can you just automatically break that with your hand? Nothing. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of strength, the right pivotal point. Exactly, right? So when it's that hardened, you just have a very short window to massage it out properly. I actually have a lot of um, clients that come in to get their cool sculpting knots out with the cavitation oh, lipo. Shit. Yeah. It's kind of scary. Yeah. <sighs> it actually ruined this model's body. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember hearing uh -huh. that. What's it's, her name? I don't remember. Why am I blank? Um, I don't know, but she's a hottie all with the body. Evangelista. <laughs> Something um, like, yeah. yeah. Linda Evangelista. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. That's it. She said she's like deformed. She her face because did she do her neck or something? Yes. That's what I'm wondering. But it literally you it have the smallest window. And yeah. if you don't fix it, there's just gonna be like this fat lump, you know? Hard fat lump. Hard. And she says there's nothing you can do. Well, I don't know if she knows about that yet, but even Doctors that do like the lipo 360, I've had people that had it done in Miami and they come home and they're like, my doctor told me to find someone who does cavitation lipo so that way you can process out the lumps that were left. Oh my God. That's so With scary. lipo 360? N With lipo 360, still sometimes, you know, there's a little bit. What's lipo 360? So one of my they best friends just it all out them. and then they do the bubble butt. And all the things. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. So that's the 360. It's the 360 because it takes, they take it from everywhere oh, and they then it, they do the They take it out BBL. where you don't want it and they put it where you want it. I see. Yeah. So that's like the BBL thing, right? Exactly. Okay. What's the difference of a BBL and a lipo 360? Maybe you don't get the lipo. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. Maybe it's the lipo 360 combo with BBL. Okay, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. This is all insane. <laughs> I am I am for it. Sorry, no, I am not it. for this. You know no. what? Like I'm totally I, for it. I like it. <laughs> well, the thing is, their recovery time, like, and they have to lay on their stomach. I would. One of my girlfriends had it done, and I was like, "Oh, the BBL." Yes. I mean, I've seen some really good ones, and I've seen some really bad ones. But also, right. I've really heard good ones. that the BBL is like the most deadly procedure yes. you can get. Really? Yes. Like even. Um, like people who are usually for all the things or actually are in medical told somebody I know they're like, do not get a BBL. Like it is so deadly and so dangerous. I've, yeah, and I would agree. I mean, that seems scary. To, I mean, I'd rather just, I'll just squat a little bit more, I guess. So everything I do is non invasive for right. that reason. Obviously, I have implants and that's like, but that's I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> but there's no way you so can actually... squat to get that that look. There's, no, there's no way. There's, it's hard. It's like it's, hard. it's like yeah. boobs. You can't do anything can't, to get yeah. those boobs. It's but everyone thing. should have boobs. Side note, because <laughs> I, it did actually save my life. Oh, your implant. My did. implant took the pressure, and that's what kept the the um, bone from actually hitting Dang my heart. Oh. Mm hmm. That's so boobs, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay yeah. so then i'm here for it yeah <laughs> you do so if people have lipo 360 they have lumps sometimes so they come to you to get the lumps to go away mm -hmm. what are the lumps from a 360 so lipo? it's just extra fat they didn't fully suck out like uh -huh. a pocket that's just just still there you know yeah and just get it rid of it i see yeah and then 
Does it melt it or? It melts it because it bursts it. So it just becomes liquid and that's why you excrete you it, it out naturally. So yeah. what's the lipo then that they actually go in there with the, like the stick? and they, like, That's, suck that's it liposuction. Out. <laughs> yeah, liposuction. And then lipo 360 is not, that's like they Well, it's it liposuction, or... but fully so around your body. It out and then they like put it back, back in. And yeah. Stuff. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. There's no. so many things. No, I'm saying I'm, I'm understanding. <laughs> understanding. <laughs> I'm understanding. Like, I don't think crew has, has any fat to suck mm-hmm. out. No, I was like, stop it. <laughs> Everyone, stop. You guys, I can't I take all these procedures. This, the scary thing about oh. uh, liposuction, and I know this to be true. I know some is, people. Um, mm-hmm. That when you say you suck it out of your belly, well, your fat goes somewhere. So exactly. maybe you are somebody who didn't get fat in your arms. Well, suddenly you don't have fat on your belly, but now you got some fat arms. Exactly. Because the fat has to go somewhere. You don't just magically not produce fat anymore. Well, the exactly. thing, so that's, thing is, that's why they produce cells, 360. Fat cells are, um, they're just transferred. So they'll go, those fat cells will actually transfer. Yeah. So then now you don't have fat on your stomach, but now you have fat, flabby arms. Well, well no, you're going to get that fat that was on your stomach and you put it in your ass. No, I'm saying but, oh, like, that's not suction in general. So what happens is a lot of times people don't change their habits. Yes. That's you know, right. and so they start, obviously, they're still eating fatty foods. So, of course, the fat goes somewhere because our bodies were created to create fat cells. In order to hold the fat, right? So it just goes somewhere else. Your body has fat cells everywhere, and then it just fills those up. So that would freak me out. But that's why I 100% was like, okay, non invasive. It doesn't hurt anybody. It, I mean, except if you have like an ongoing issue with your thyroid or like liver or kidney, of course, you know, you're, you're not a good candidate. You, <laughs> we don't want to mess anything up. But I mean, it's not something that can hurt anybody you know and but you how can do we get it know this how do we know this for sure like there's all these new things coming out like the cool scope right right and everybody runs there and then you have the supermodel that is disfigured literally i mean absolutely devastating i mean i think technically so, it would be 20 years of right of or 10 years <laughs> of um research research and stuff and um, but this has been, this came out right before COVID, but it was like, te- started being tested, I think in like 2016. So they kind of have like a good basis, you know? Um, of course there's no way to a hundred percent be sure. Right? right. But one, there's a couple of things that I would say like more logically make sense, um, just because it's naturally flushed out, you don't technically have to do anything. It's not like it's on you to massage four hours a day or 45 minutes, you know, to make sure those toxins, cause all it is, is to- they're toxins, fat yeah. cells are a toxin. So it's like going out drinking and one night and then all of a sudden you wake up skinny the next morning cause your body went into over metabolizing all those toxins out similar, you know? So just metabol you're like metabolizing all those toxins out. Um, but that's why they have the protocol on, you know, if you have any issues like metabolizing, if you have thyroid issues, you know, of course, since it's metabolizing through your like liver and everything, if you have liver issues, et cetera. So do people have to, what if they don't know that? I mean, m- you I, would know most people, if you have an issue like that severe, you've already had oh, okay. a doctor's visit on it. So it, then you got into that and then do you, you own a, is it, what, it, what is it a spa? What would you call it? Yes. So, yes. <laughs> um, Lux Contour Dallas. Previously we called it a beauty lounge, but I'm actually still finding the name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I like the Lux. Yeah. Well, the only thing is I have this new vision. I actually have okay. a new place. Oh, amazing. Um, Congratulations. Yes, except at the city wouldn't mind rushing our permits. Where at? <laughs> um, right across from Starbucks on Greenville next to Layla's. It's where the old Oliver's hair replacement is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so it's like right there. Super cute. Um, I'll be upstairs and huge window. Going to have hair chairs for blowouts, all the things. Oh. Basically, it's going to be a one-stop shop, you know, just like for you to be able to go in maybe girls day, whatever type of thing, 
get your nails done and then you know get your fat zapped well that was my <laughs> next question like do you have so you have that but then do you have like the m sculpt but you do you do that or cool sculpt i, I am gonna be bringing in m sculpt whenever okay. the new location is actually open got it so right now i'm in a temporary place until the city moves forward you know yeah. But so what is M sculpt? M sculpt is that one that like contracts your muscles, oh, right? Oh yeah. yeah. And it's very expensive. To yeah. Have done. I feel that would work cuz it's actually doing you're, you're something. Yeah, you're contracting like if you're doing the crunches. It's kind of like those little uh things that you stick in your stomach and like the it. stem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you kind of need to already have like a plan on getting the fat off first, you right. know well, what I mean? Well, cuz we had I don't remember what episode they were, but Taylor and Jen mm -hmm. from lemon avenue yeah so taylor does it and he said the problem is people will come get m sculpt and they think it's going to give them abs but you're really not a good candidate for m sculpt unless it's you're already like working you're out wanting to be just mm -hmm. more tone like defining kind of the abs i think you mm -hmm. already have like That's you're not exactly gonna it. get a six pack you're not <laughs> like if you never work out it's yeah not really your thing like yeah. it's a waste of your money in my opinion i saw on instagram uh jessica simpson getting m sculpt on her face yeah, Is so that that's how sculpt what she did. Yeah, just I saw face what she did. sculpt, but it's oh. the same thing, and but on her face. But part of me thinks it's almost like the muscle toning that we do with Maria, just right. a little bit more intense. Intense. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. It's when like working I saw out it. your face. Yeah, yeah. which and I'm all into it. face yoga right now. Face yoga. Um, oh, send me your plan. Coolest. I need it. I'm yeah. gonna order a drinks. book on Amazon because it made suddenly. <laughs> sorry, not to like um, <laughs> distract, but I started thinking our face is muscles. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure I could it's lift my own muscles. face doing face yoga. And there's like all these really. I mean, you probably look like a crazy person, but I'll do anything. But I think Same. also you could probably send it my way, like, girl. <laughs> like, you know, squint too much where you cause. But like, you're not squinting. What do you do? You do? Move, Show us you, a couple well, movements. And then how do you yeah. move without moving? Well, I know that you're because <laughs> your muscles are like, or my muscles at least are frozen. Well, you do like those like <laughs> old faces, but you don't like lift your eyebrows. You have to learn how to like train. My eyebrows don't lift anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's perfect. But I know like you can do where you stick your chin forward and you push your jaw out, and that will yeah. start to tighten. Under. There you go. <laughs> and you pull it forward. <laughs> do you feel it like pull right here? Yeah. Yeah, you can feel I got it. A, I got a massage once and this chick like massaged my face and my jaws and so like, good she for went you. in there. And oh my it God. It felt was amazing. amazing. Yeah. Who is yeah. that? That's, yeah, I believe massage. that. Yeah. Who she, is that? She, I'll give you the name. But speaking of that. But so she was awesome. There is a woman that my mom had sent me that you work with a long time ago. And I go, oh, oh my gosh, Jackie. Barbara so, Sturm, right? Is that her name? No. Oh, oh, Joanna Check? No. Yes, that's who it is. She does yes. the celebrity facials. Yes. She actually does the EMS on the face as well. Yes, yes. Not yeah. Barbara Sturm? So no, I, um, man, y'all making me want to get a facial. I need a facial now. <laughs> yeah, right? Her facials are eight hundred dollars each, or yeah. thirteen. Oh, yeah, used to go to her. thirteen hundred dollars. Oh my yeah. god! Is that, like she put like gold into the yeah. diamonds and stuff. She or? just lays it on you thick. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really wow. know. She does a whole lot of stuff, but her hands are magic, y'all. Her hands. Have you had one? No. Oh. But her hands are amazing. They're like a baby's butt. I don't know why okay. we use that for an example, but it's kind of awkward, <laughs> so right? Cute. I know, but so smooth, you yeah, know? So She's smooth. like, so this smooth. Light. Yeah, she does. She goes to like Met Gala, oh, all the yeah, things. She does celebrities. Right? She does all celebrities. Yeah. yeah. I think Lauren Everett's Skinny Confidential went to her. Yeah, she's really good. Oh, she's wow. amazing. Amazing. So I got, um, brought in with her to do like her hair and makeup for different stuff no way yeah so whenever she was you with dior yes ma'am oh, wow. mm -hmm. you do it all i know man. i didn't know i'm like what else <laughs> that's awesome um yeah so actually my dad was a hairstylist before he went corporate with um univision okay. and so he at a young age taught us everything like you know so at 16 i was doing hair for proms and weddings and stuff, you know. So it's just one of those things 
don't look at my hair now. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, girl, you ain't never done your hair. No, you look gorgeous. <laughs> it's oh, nasty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is called air dry running around. I've been running since eight this morning. Aww. <laughs> I air dry my hair. It looks so ridiculous. So yeah. I think you look amazing. Yeah. That's what friends are for. <laughs> Boost you up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I saw that. Are you truly starting also a life insurance agency? Yes. Tell me about that. I okay. saw that and I was like, what in Yeah, the world? I, was, I was a little confused, but I was like, all right, she does it all. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, so beauty is like a passion, right? And it's not going anywhere. It's just going to, we're just in like transition period. Yeah. Um, I'm obviously still seeing clients, et cetera. But a good friend of mine, actually, she was like, Everything she touches turns to gold. It's Maria. You know, the oh, one that yes. owns EXO. Yes. And oh, yeah. so I was like, um, she told me about it. And I was like, mm, I, don't know. I, don't really, I don't really have time for anything else in my life. But I was like, okay, I trust like your business sense, you know. And so I just was like, okay, let me just see. And... Now I'm like so passionate about it because I meet with all these people and I'm like, oh my God, they're having to start GoFundMes for their mom. So then now they're realizing how important it is to have life insurance, you know, and um, I specialize more in like whole life and accidental death and dismemberment and then like income protection. But um, it's because term guys did you know this this is very important <laughs> everyone to know it only pays out one percent so like of all the billions of term policies that have ever been written only one percent of those have ever been paid what does that mean i, I don't know what that uh, means <laughs> Tell so us more. <laughs> a term policy is for a certain term right so it's 5 10 20 30 a lot of times jobs you know they give it to you for the life of what they probably think that you're going to be there, right? At a job. Correct. They give you a life insurance. A lot option for Oh, one. I got it. Yes, okay. ma'am. And so, uh, but 31 days after you leave, you know, it expires um, unless you decide to take it on yourself. But also at that point, um, every five years or so or whatever the policy is set up for it, uh, the rate changes. So monthly, like your rate will just increase. So it doesn't like make perfect sense <laughs> you know what I mean I mean when you're looking at it in big picture finances you're like okay so if I'm here 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 but it's only for this amount of time does that make sense unless it's like $15 a month where you don't even care or 20 or 30 you know where it's like a drink and it's more like just in case I have this extra you know for these 30 years um, but where whole life is amazing is that it builds up cash value so like, for instance, I took out a really large um, whole life policy because in three years, I'll have money to borrow against it. So use it like an investment. So it's more. My husband there, talks about that. Exactly. Yep. So it's more. Um, there are many beautiful avenues mm -hmm. of it. Number one, say you're 20. I wish that every 20, 30 year old would get it like they're so much cheaper and they can have so much mm -hmm. more. But um, say they got one even just for 15000 By the time it, you know, they really use it, it's like 40000 It's grown. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 30, whatever the case may be. Yeah. So it's just the cheapest way to invest your money. <laughs> you know? I yep. see. My husband you see? started talking about this. Yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And the more you, like, learn about it as far as investment, the more incredible it is. Now, I don't really sell it for investment, but other than to my friends, I'm like, look, if you ever really like yeah. want to, um, you, you're not going to ever pay the 500,000. Like you're, you never will pay that much money. You might pay a hundred thousand into it by the time you're 65. Right. Maybe. Um, but you have that to borrow against. Mm -hmm. So it's like a win-win. It's yeah. not your money. There's no interest. You don't have to pay taxes on it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So many wins. Like you can use it for other things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You like know? Interesting. But then mm -hmm. if you are just doing it. So what I personally am mm -hmm. like, I just tell you, just get enough to cover your burial because our company is the only one in America that's actually guaranteed to pay out to the funeral home 
without a death certificate. Yeah. So because it was designed for veterans. Oh. So the whole goal was to fill in the gap since, you know, the government can't possibly pay for everybody's exact expense because they don't pay for anything until they get to the cemetery, to the VA cemetery. So that being said, they wanted to help come up with a program to um, cover that. But right now we've, we're in a period where we've opened it up to everyone, you know? So I just tell people, get a small policy to cover your, you know, death benefit. And then if you have anyone depending on your finances at all, even your dog, I mean, seriously, just set up some income protection, even if it's just for a year to help them, you know, adjust to the loss per se. Obviously, mm -hmm. you're never going to adjust emotionally. I'm just saying like, you have time to figure out like where you're going to live, what you're going to do, what, you know? Yeah. The finances aren't a stress. I mean, yeah, it, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. And so but, what, how much work does that entail for you? Like you have to get clients. To, I mean. Yeah. So the company I actually work for. Um, we, so you are like a, a, right, a branch of it. Exactly. Got it. So right now, um, just look at, it's like brokerage. Got it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So the company I'm with, American Income Life, we just, we have like, um, you know, they can reach out. We're at the VFWs. So we've teamed up with, we're the only company that has been able to team up with uh, the Veteran Service Organization, AM Vets, all these things, right? Because the policies were designed for veterans. But um, it's more like USAA in the sense that you can bring in whoever would be close to you, et cetera. Wow. Yeah. That's so interesting. Good for you. Yeah. I know. So it's really exciting, but I've become extremely passionate about like, <laughs> like I'm like, oh my God, are you covered? <laughs> <laughs> because you never know, you yeah, know, like yeah. my life story is that you never know, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so it's just like, if you're terminally ill, we send you half of your money up front and the other half goes whenever you're you're deceased so that way the family still can cover those expenses you know but there's little things like that we have strike and layoff protection we have all these things paid wow. up option at 65 there's just a lot of great great benefits wow that's awesome good for you thank 